Hello everyone. Sometimes life gives people incredible surprises, and it's difficult to believe they're real. In today's video, we've collected some amazing coincidences for you that prove how unpredictable and strange our world can be. Let's get it on. Newlyweds in a Sandbox Shortly before their wedding, Amy Maiden and Nick Wheeler decided to go through Nick's old family photos. While looking at his childhood pictures, they suddenly discovered an incredible coincidence. A photo of Nick on the beach with his sister and his cousin caught Amy's eyes. The picture was taken during the vacation of Nick's family in Cornwall. However, she noticed the picture not because of her fiancé or the funny sandy boat in which he was sitting, but because in the background she saw herself. There she is, playing on the beach, unaware of the fact that she's sitting next to her future husband. It turned out that in 1994, Nick's family came to Mouse Hole, the town where Amy grew up. If someone would have come up to Amy and Nick that day and said they were going to get married one day, the kids would have thought that that person was crazy. But it did happen. The newlyweds met 11 years after the photo was taken. Today, they are married, and their wedding took place in Golville Church, which is a couple of steps away from that very beach. Mr. Chance Reporters often interview people on the streets, but what is the probability that you accidentally stumble upon a person who was part of the event that you're asking about? Before the Merseyside Derby game, BBC reporter Stuart Flinders was asking people on the streets of Liverpool if they remembered the 1967 Derby, when Everton and Liverpool met in the fifth round of the FA Cup. Imagine the surprise of the journalists when one of the interviewees turned out to be the famous Liverpool goalkeeper Tommy Lawrence, and look how happy he was. I'm just wondering whether you remember the Derby match in 1967 at Goodison, FA Cup, fifth round, and it was shown on a big screen at Anfield at the That's same right. Time. Do you remember it? Yeah, I do. I played in it. Did you? I was goalkeeper for Liverpool. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's a stroke of luck me meeting <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, can you remind me of your name? Please? Tommy Lawrence. Tommy, nice to meet you. What, what do you remember about it? It was a great game, yes. Alan Ball scored the winner. He did indeed. Yeah, he did, yeah. One life for two. Once upon a time, two American families adopted two twin brothers. Their parents died when the babies were only a few weeks old. Actually, twins are not supposed to be separated, but, well, it happened. The adoptive parents didn't know each other, but they gave the boys the same name, Jim. They became Jim Springer and Jim Lewis. The story could probably end there. There's lots of separated relatives in the world, right? But the two Jims turned out to be truly unique. The brothers grew up not knowing about the existence of each other. Both studied law, both married girls named Linda, then both got divorced, married again, and this time two ladies named Betty, and they both had sons. You think that's it? No way. Both Jims named their sons in a similar way, James Allen and James Allen, with two L's, and their pet dogs were named Toy. But the coincidences don't even end there. They had similar jobs and security, drank the same brand of beer, both were avid chain smokers and even preferred the same brand of cigarettes. Both brothers had a woodworking workshop in the garage and owned a Chevrolet car of a pale blue color. Jim Lewis and Jim Springer first met on February the 9th, 1979, after 39 long years of separation. This story became widely known thanks to Thomas J. Bouchard, a professor of psychology at the University of Minnesota. Thanks to the Jim twins, Professor Bouchard received a grant for the study of the influence of genes on medical and psychological parameters. Prediction of Titanic's Disaster in the year 1898, 14 years before the wreck of the Titanic, science fiction writer Morgan Robertson wrote the novel Futility, which described the wreck of a ship called Titan. Oh wow, similar names. But the coincidences don't end there. Both ships were considered to be unsinkable, had similar technical characteristics, and in both cases, the crash revealed a shortage of boats, and both collided with an iceberg in the North Atlantic. Moreover, Titan also had its starboard side damaged, and both wrecks had happened in the same month, in April. Robertson managed to almost predict even the number of boats. There were 20 of them on the Titanic, and the fictional Titan was equipped with 24. After the wreck of the Titanic, the book was republished under the title The Wreck of the Titan, or Futility. Mark Twain's Comet 
Halley's Comet is considered to be one of the most famous comets. It returns to the Sun every 75 to 76 years and is visible to the naked eye. In ancient times, people expected disasters when it appeared, and today many continue to think that this cosmic body appears in the sky for a reason. However, to date there's only one confirmation of the connection of the comet with human destiny. Famous American writer Mark Twain wrote in his autobiography in 1909, I came in with Halley's Comet in 1835. It's coming again next year and I expect to go out with it. It will be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't go out with Halley's Comet. So it's happened. He was born on November the 30th, 1835, two weeks after the comet passed the orbit closest to the Sun, and died on April 21st, 1910, the day after the next visit of Halley's Comet. Neighbours two centuries away does it happen that great people just happen to be neighbours? Well, looks like it. Baroque composer George Frederick Handel once lived in London at 25 Brook Street. In 1759, Handel was gone, and in 1966 in the house next door, number 23, lived famous musician Jimi Hendrix, along with his friend Kathy Etchingham. What a coincidence. After learning of the coincidence, Hendrix bought some of Handel's records. Today, these two houses in the heart of London are a joint Handel and Hendrix Museum. After all, why not? They were both brilliant musicians who greatly influenced the development of music. Hoover Dam Tragedy Hoover Dam is one of the largest and probably the most famous dams in the United States. It was built on the border between the states of Nevada and Arizona in the narrow Black Canyon formed by the Colorado River. This is one of the most popular attractions in the United States. The construction of the dam started in 1931 and was completed in 1936, two years ahead of schedule. But such a large-scale construction couldn't do without victims, considering the technologies at that time. The construction of the dam was carried out under heavy conditions. Part of the work was carried out in tunnels where workers suffered from the excess of carbon monoxide. The employer claimed that all diseases are the consequences of normal pneumonia and that he wasn't responsible for it. At the same time, the construction of the Hoover Dam became the first one when builders used hard hats, but it didn't help much. In total, 96 people died during construction. One of the first people killed in the construction of the dam was topographer George Tierney. Drowned in the Colorado waters on December the 20th, 1922, trying to choose the best place for construction. And the last person whose life was taken by the dam was Patrick Tierney, son of George Tierney. He also passed away on December the 20th. Reincarnation According to scientific research, the chances of meeting your identical twin are not that small. Take at least the sensational story of this Irishman who met his doppelganger on a plane. But what about real reincarnation? And not just of anyone, but of Enzo Anselmo Ferrari, the founder of the Ferrari company and the eponymous motor racing team. Enzo was born in 1898 and died in 1988, having lived for 90 years and having become famous all over the world. The famous racing driver passed on August 14th, and on October 15th the same year in the German city of Gelsenkirchen, in a family of Turkish immigrants, was born a boy named Mesut Özil. And you may have seen him, because Özil became a world-famous footballer after playing for Real Madrid and even winning the World Cup in 2014. Today he plays for Arsenal, and his similarity to Enzo Ferrari is growing stronger every year. You could assume that they're relatives, but unfortunately they are not. Well, the only explanation left is reincarnation. Also, now we can imagine how Azeel will look in old age. Convenient. Accident in Ohio Today, the number of cars in the world has long exceeded a billion, and traffic accidents are not rare anymore. After all, there are a lot of causes, and no matter how dire the consequences, every road accident is part of the statistics. So for modern people, the news about two cars colliding in Ohio in 1895 doesn't seem particularly interesting. It happens every day, and not just in Ohio, but this story would not have been on our list today if not for one detail. The fact is that at the end of the 19th century, the automotive industry was just beginning to develop, and in Ohio there were only two cars, and somehow they managed to not fit on the road. Unfortunately, the car crashes weren't documented back then, so there's no official records of this case. Identical Comics on March the 12th, 1951, the comic Dennis the Menace, created by artist Hank Ketchum, 
was published in 16 American newspapers, and it must be said that over the years of its existence, the history of Dennis became incredibly popular. Today, the comic is published in a thousand newspapers in 48 countries and translated into 19 languages. In 1953, the author received a Rubin Award for it, and films, television series, animated series, and video games about Dennis were created based on the stories. All in all, a real success. But there was an incredible coincidence. Also, on March the 12th, 1951, exactly on the same day in the UK, appeared a comic book called Dennis the Menace. And this is not a data leak or some very tricky plagiarism. The artist actually created two comics with the same names and similar plots, being on different sides of the Atlantic. In order to not confuse readers, they had to change the titles a bit. So the American comics became Dennis in the UK, and the British was named Dennis and Nasher, outside of the United Kingdom. Psst, dude, are you looking for new technologies and great gadgets? Are your thoughts focused on the future? Do you love huge vehicles and can't imagine your life without robots around you? Then visit TechZone and you'll find all this and more. The link is in the description. You interested? Great. 